All right, guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times on Thursday morning, January 15, 2015. Uh, well, it's a spectacular day in the end times down here in Doomsday Duplex in St. Croix, Virgin Islands. I just finished my day late weekly climate change meltdown roundup rant. Uh, from the mainstream media and I, I think sometimes people get uh, the the misimpression that most of the information that I get and process comes from the mainstream media which is nothing further from the truth I just like commenting on the mainstream media you know getting out my uh, and my bullshit, a meter button and whatnot, reading between the lines, but actually the vast majority of my crazy information that I get comes from the alternative media because you better believe the mainstream media has very little interest in uh, the collapse of global industrial civilization and the collapse of planet Earth. But as I've mentioned many times, one of the places I spend a lot of my time on is Alternet for some alternative viewpoints. And showing up uh, was actually yesterday was the single best article on climate change and big oil and the dots connecting between all that uh, that I have found this week. And I am simply going to share it with you. And it is the newest essay by my buddy Michael T. Clare. That's Clare, K L A R E. There's plenty of uh, YouTubes by Michael on here. I strongly suggest if you are not familiar with the voice of Michael T. Clare that you do so. I'm, so I'm just pretty much going to read his newest essay. I'm going to put the link on here to alternate.org. I, occur, I encourage you to read it yourself, but if you would just as soon some dumb hippie sitting in an easy chair in paradise read it for you, I'll be happy to do it. Um, the name of the article is Perpetuating the Reign of Carbon. And it has a long introduction which is worth reading. Uh, from Alternet. I'm going to skip over that long introduction and get right into it. Carbon counterattack. How big oil is responding to the anti-carbon movement by Michael T. Clare. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'll just touch on several of his points encourage you to shut me up, go on the link, and read it yourself. Take it away, Michael. <clears throat> Around the world, carbon-based fuels are under attack. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to resist the, the impulse to pick up the bullshit detector button. The, the, the attack is a small one, but it's better than no attack at all. Okay. Increasingly grim economic pressures, growing popular resistance, and the efforts of government regulators have all shocked the energy industry. Well, they, they, they barely pricked the energy industry, but we'll take whatever shock we can get. Oil prices are falling. Colleges and universities are, divest, are divesting from their carbon stocks. Voters are instituting curbs on fracking. <coughs> and delegates at the UN climate conference in Peru have agreed to impose substantial restrictions on global carbon emissions at a conference in Paris later in the year. I promised I wasn't going to pick it up, but I can't resist. E e even the goddamn Pope understands what a fucking joke these car these these climate 
talks are. But anyway, uh, I'm going to give my... All right, I'm going to shut up and let Michael continue on with his own rant. Okay. All this has been accompanied by what might be viewed as a moral assault on the very act of extracting carbon-based fuels from the earth in which the major oil, gas, and coal companies find themselves correctly, I might add, portrayed as the enemies of humankind, not to mention the uh, enemies of uh, planet kind. Under such pressures, you might assume that big energy would react defensively, perhaps even apologizing for its role in spurring climate change while assuming a leadership position in planning for the transition to a post-carbon economy. Yeah, right. But you would be wrong if, if you're suffering from any delusion waiting for an apology from, uh, from Exxon. Yeah, you would be wrong. Instead of retreating, the major companies have gone on the offensive extolling their contributions to human progress and minimizing the potential for renewables to replace fossil fuels in just about any imaginable future. Well, there you go. And uh, that the big carbon outfits would seek to perpetuate their privileged market position in the global economy is of course hardly surprising. Yeah, they own the global industrial economy. And their privileged position, yeah, I would say having about a 90% ownership stake is a privileged position, particularly when you have Barack Obama and Vladimir Putin and that new little idiot over there in China being the three biggest cheerleaders of uh, big oil since Ayn Rand in 1957. After all, oil, in case anyone does not, uh, does not understand this, let the alternative media explain it to you. <clears throat> oil is the single most valuable commodity in international commerce, which is why firms like ExxonMobil, Chevron, and Shell regularly top lists of the world's most profitable enterprises. Still, these companies are not just employing conventional legal and corporate tactics to protect their position. They are mounting a moral assault of their own, claiming that fossil fuels are an essential factor in eradicating poverty and achieving a decent life on this planet, which is exactly what fossil fuels are. Uh, anyone, uh, and, I, and I'm not sure that Michael St. Clair or, or the Pope are denying this, uh, fossil fuels are probably the essential factor in eradicating poverty and achieving a decent life for individuals on this planet. Improbable as such claims may seem, there's nothing improbable about them, Michael, they are being echoed by powerful authorities from around the world. Typically, hmm, I wonder why this is, the leaders of carbon producing nations like Russia and Saudi Arabia or the representatives of American energy producing states like good old Texas. And you can count on one thing, this crew of fossil fuel enthusiasts is intent on ensuring that any path to a carbon-free future will at best be long and arduous. While you're at it, add top 
congressional leaders to this crew. Uh, he's talking about the Republican Congress. I might also invite him to look over at the Democratic president talking about the uh, Republican Congress members pocketing contributions by big oil. I, you know, I really need to study how much money uh, big oil put into uh, Barack Obama's last campaign. And unless directly challenged, this pro-carbon offensive is likely to attract at least as much favor as the claims of the anti-carbon activist. At this point, of course, the moral arguments against carbon consumption are, or at least should be, well known. As the oil, gas, and coal companies are selfishly pursuing mega profits at the expense of the climate, the environment, our children, our grandchildren, and even possibly a future of any reasonable sort for humanity as a whole. And he quotes here my old buddy Bill McKibben. Quote, basically the big energy companies have said we are going to wreck the planet. We don't care what you say about it. We think we can and we dare you to stop us. Good old Bill McKibben. I've had many rants cheering on Bill and, and of course I've had many rants while Bill McKibben is uh, not going to save the planet. But anyway, this is Michael Clare's rant, not Hambones. The fossil fuel industry is also portrayed as the nucleus of a global system of wealth and power that drags down democracy and perpetuates grotesque planetary inequalities. This is uh, my old buddy Naomi Klein. Quote, fossil fuels really do create a hyper-stratified economy it is the nature of the resources that they are concentrated and you need a huge amount of infrastructure to get them out of the ground and transport them and that lends itself to huge profits and they're big enough that they can buy off politicians. Huh? Do you think so? Uh, of course I understand guys that anybody uh, following this story uh, for about an hour of their time this is pretty much just the ABCs of how this works, but it's all being spelled out right here. Oh, anyway. Uh, once upon a time, the giant carbon companies such as Exxon sought to deflect these attacks by denying the very existence of climate change or the role of humans in causing it. Uh, they also financed the efforts of rogue scientists to throw doubt on global warming. And while d denialism still figures in the propaganda machine of some of these carbon co companies, they have now largely chosen to embrace another strategy, extolling the benefits of fossil fuels and highlighting their contributions to human well-being and progress. Uh, are, you, are you done for the day? I can move this outside if you don't want to. If you don't want to listen to this, I can go outside with it. Well, if you could go outside, that would be good. Yeah, I'm done. All right. I didn't, uh, I thought that I had time to do this rap, but my buddy has already done work. I'm glad to see it. A short day. A short day at work. I'm probably going to rant longer more than I uh, think it's working. Anyway, I'm going to move on out here so my buddy can relax and not have to listen to this. Anyway, I'm going to enjoy the tropical breezes while I bring you the second half of this story. Whoa! So 
I don't even know if you're what part of my anatomy is going to be in focus here. Okay. Where were we, Michael, in your uh, in your spot on analysis? Uh, if a climate movement is going to challenge the energy powers of this planet effectively, it is crucial to grasp the vision into which big energy is undoubtedly planning to sink incredible resources and in which across much of the planet will become a living, breathing argument for ignoring the catastrophic warming of the planet. They present it, of course, as a glowing dreamscape of a glorious future, though a nightmare is what should come to mind. Okay, here then, in a nutshell, is the argument that big energy is going to seed into the planet for the foreseeable future. Prepare yourself. Okay, so then he, he breaks down the unadulterated horseshit coming out of Big Oil's mouth. I didn't bring my bullshit indicator out here with me, but I would have just run the batteries out of it anyway. Okay, the cornerstone of some new Exxon report is its claims that ever incre increasing supplies of energy are needed to sustain economic growth and ensure human betterment and that fossil fuels alone exist in sufficient quantity and at affordable enough prices to satisfy rising international demand. That is exactly what fossil fuels are. This Exxon report uh, is, uh, I probably actually would not bring out my bullshit detector button. My guess is that this Exxon report is, is spot on, if that is the cornerstone. That is exactly. Quoting the report, forecasting long-term energy trends begins with a simple fact. People need energy. Over the next few decades, population and income growth and an unprecedented expansion of the global middle class are expected to cre create new demands for energy. There you go. Uh, no one can argue this. So what are that? I've had this rant about, I've, I've already had a rant about this report already, but uh, this is Michael Clare's rant on it. And most of that future energy, this is according to Exxon, and anyone else with a brain, will have to come from fossil fuels. All told, the report estimates that the world will need 35% more energy in 2040 than it does today, and that would mean adding an additional 191 quadrillion BTUs to global supplies over and above the 526 quadrillion BTUs consumed today. And the vast majority of these BTUs estimated by Exxon at 67% will be provided by fossil fuels. Without fossil fuels, this argument holds there can be no economic growth. That is exactly right. Then he quotes my old buddy and fellow Texan, Exxon CEO Chairman Rex Tillerson. Quote, Energy is fundamental to economic growth, and oil is fundamental because until this point in time, we have not found through technology or other means any other fuel that can substitute for the role that oil plays in transportation, not just passenger cars, 
but commercial transportation, jet fuel, marine, all the ways in which we use oil as a fuel to move people and things around the planet. Uh, there you go. Then he talks about uh, how how the ramping up of natural gas through fracking is going to play into this. Uh, Exxon insists without carbon-based fuels, economic growth will screech to a halt and the world's poor and disadvantaged will stay immersed in poverty. And again, I'm agreeing with Rex Tillerson and, 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 and Michael Clare is not really saying he doesn't agree, disagree with Rex at this point. And so we finally cut to the, to the meat of this matter. If there is one overarching theme to the new Exxon ethos, it is that we are witnessing the emergence of a new global middle class with glittering possibilities and that this expanding multitude constituting perhaps one half of the world's population by 2040 will require ever greater quantities of oil, coal, and natural gas if it is to have any hope of <coughs> achieving its true potential. And uh, citing data from the Brookings Institution, Exxon notes that the number of people who earn enough to be considered members of the global middle class will jump from 1.9 billion in 2010 to 4.7 billion people joining the middle class by 2030 representing what the Brookings Institute calls quote the largest collective increase in living standards in history and take a wild guess leading the pack China and in industry the emergence of a middle-class bulge on a planetary scale representing a kind of consumerism gone wild is something to be celebrated. The company insists in a new report echoing the world's of words of the UN Development program and this is you know what I'm calling the, the United Nations a bunch of goddamn planet eaters that is exactly why uh, you know what makes such a farce of, of these UN climate change meetings uh, let, let's go to the other side of the hall from those climate change meetings and listen to a quote from the UN development program quote when dozens of countries and billions of people move up the development ladder as they are doing today, it has a direct impact on wealth creation and broader human progress in all countries and regions of the world." Close quote. And then back to Michael St. Clair for all this to occur, however, that rising middle class will need staggering amounts of added energy. Of course, we're talking about new supplies of the same old carbon-based energy forms here to build and power all the cars, homes, businesses, appliances, and resorts such as the resorts around here that such consumers would undoubtedly crave and demand as, as all of these benefits depend on energy. 
Anyway, guys, uh, this goes on and on. I think you uh, get the point uh, by now. Uh, you, you know what this means for the planet. It means that the planet has no chance is what it means for the planet. I'm going into my own uh, my own rant. Let me get to this. This is a long, long, long uh, story and uh, I'm going to turn it over to Michael to take it away from here. Good Lord, Michael. I actually... Uh, so let's get down to the bottom paragraph of Michael St. Clair's rant. Preventing these catastrophes, meaning that these catastrophes being unleashed by the global middle class using more and more fossil fuels. Preventing these catastrophes will involve sustained and dedicated effort by all those who truly care about the future of humanity. This will certainly require better educating people about the risks of climate change and the role played by fossil fuel combustion in producing it. But it will also require deconstructing and exposing the futuristic fantasies deployed by the fossil fuel companies to perpetuate their dominance. However fraudulent their arguments may be, they have the potential to blunt significant progress on climate change and so must be vigorously repudiated. Unless we do so, the apostles of carbon will continue to dominate the debate and bring us ever closer to a planetary inferno. Ever closer to a planetary inferno. That is what we are ever closer to with each passing day. But anyway, uh, I strongly urge you to go read this story yourself and you will understand why this eco-Nazi, while I'm not cheering on Rex Tillerson at, at Exxon, I am agreeing with pretty much everything the man says. You can murder the messenger all you want, Michael Clare. It does not change a damn word of, of what Rex Tillerson, the, one of the biggest planet eaters on planet Earth, has to say. He's spelling it out. Here in 2014, just like Ayn Rand was spelling it out in 1957. Anyway, I'm getting hungry, guys, and I need to go find what fossil fuel I'm going to use to make myself a ham and cheese sandwich to get through another day of paradise here in the end times for this rant. Bye, guys.